Hi friends, it's Anne here, and today's video is going to be all about Merit Beauty. So I'm going to break up this video into a couple little parts. I'm going to kind of introduce what Merit Beauty is and the brand. I'm going to do like a five minute morning look that transitions into like an evening look. And then we'll come back and I'll talk about my opinion on all the different products I've tried, as well as like an overall opinion at the end. So let's get started into what is Merit or who is Merit? I apologize if I'm looking down a lot. I have like five pages of notes. So Merit Beauty, the whole premise around Merit Beauty is like minimalist type makeup, less is more, very like edited, curated type look. It's it's not like a full face Nikki tutorials type look. It's more like a Michelle Wong type look, if that makes sense. Um, it looks like they started doing testing and like thinking about the brand around, I think, 2017. And they launched in 2020, which <laughs> unfortunate timing for a brand to launch, but they seem to have done really, really well. Um, they do have their products available on their website that's um, available. They ship to Canada and the US only. And then they're also available in Sephora Canada and I believe obviously Sephora US as well. Their whole point is to have skin loving ingredients in their formula. They have tried and eliminated about a hundred and or no sorry like 1300 ingredients that are okay by US standards but are actually banned in the EU for being like toxic or not good for you. Um, as mentioned they're also like Skin-loving ingredients, plant-based, uh, they have squalane, vitamin B, antioxidants. Um, they did partner with uh, sort of a famous esthetician in LA called Viva D'Souza to help um, make sure that their products are also good for the skin. They are vegan, cruelty-free, and certified by Leaping Bunny. So now I'm just going to jump into a five-minute morning routine. I think it's about five minutes. I'm sure the recorded video is about seven to eight minutes it's always a little slower when you're recording yourself because you're like thinking a little bit too much but it was a great morning for me to test because I was kind of rushing to get some makeup done before I had a conference call and then I decided because it was a pretty simple look and if you know me I, I do like to wear you know a full face of makeup so I wanted to see if I could take that simple look and transition it into a evening look so I will mention all the products if I don't mention them while or like show them while I'm doing that video, I will like mention them down below as well as mention what's on my face right now because I do have the mirror products on plus a few other things. Um, the five minute morning one, I'm gonna try and play like as is and the evening one, I might speed up a little bit. Um, as always, you can use the YouTube settings to like speed things up or slow things down as you wish. And then when we come back, I'm gonna talk about all the individual products that I used.
talking about each individual product. So the first product I want to talk about is the Minimalist Perfecting Complexion Stick in Dune. The Canadian price for this is, it's pretty steep, it's $49 Canadian. The US price is $38. The product size is 3.7 grams. It was kind of hard to find some comparables in terms of product size to other products. But for reference, the Marc Jacobs Accomplice Stick Concealer is 5 grams. And then there's a Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage Duo Stick that's 2 grams. And they're looking at some foundation sticks. The Westman Atelier Foundation Stick is 9 grams. And the Hourglass Foundation Stick is 7 grams. So it's definitely much smaller than a foundation and it's more relative in size to like a concealer stick. So the description of this product is it's not a foundation or a concealer but it'll replace both in your makeup bag. They've designed this in place of all of our coverage so you can make edits. So the whole point is to kind of use it as a touch point concealer where where and when you need coverage. Uh, lightweight hydrating formula. Now wear throughout the day without settling into fine lines. It says buildable light to medium coverage that stays breathable all day. It's, it's borderline uh, medium, like it's it's on the edge of medium. Like if you're thinking like of something that's like a medium medium, it's probably just, just touching that medium, I feel like. Um, they have sea daffodil extract in this, which is supposed to help diminish the appearance of pigment and dark spots. Um, there's fatty acids that condition and the condition the skin and lock in moisture. And then the product, this actual product component was made with 43% recycled plastic. So my specific thoughts on this product, it's really an interesting product. It really is a concealer, but the way they've designed this and the way they market it, I think is really smart to kind of say it's not con not concealer, not foundation, because it makes you intend to use the product differently. Like if I think about how I do a full face of makeup, you know, I'm going to use concealer like under the eyes on my acne spots and then put foundation all over. But if you're not using either concealer or either foundation, where are you gonna put this kind of a product on to like make your skin look a bit more cup, like smoother, like in terms of color and texture, but not so much that you're really covering everything. So I, th I feel like they did a really smart job in terms of the packaging design and the marketing around this to like, this product makes me think. <laughs> um, it's an okay product in terms of the actual product. It does feel pretty nourishing if you have oily skin you'll definitely want to try and set this but I feel like I don't need to set it um and it does wear like it has that ugh, let me do a swatch too sorry I have this in the shade dune by the way which I feel like is a great shade for me it's that light light sort of color <laughs> can't think of the words light color with the pink undertone and yeah like it, it looks pretty medium coverage there but soon you start sort of like you're going to start blending it out any product that's specifically like this I would say the closest kind of type product would be the NARS Soft Matte Concealer, and this is probably a hair more creamier than that. I do feel like on days where I have really dark circles, that that's not enough. It's not going to really do it. It's not going to cover them, but it does help cover it enough that I feel like it looks pretty natural. Like if you're going for like the no makeup makeup look, it's definitely going to be good. It's definitely a product I want to play with a bit more and get a better feel for it. Out of all the products, to me, this is like a meh, like it's in the middle of the road. Is it a good product? Yes, but it's really pricey for the amount of product that you actually get. And I feel like there's other products out there that you can probably get a similar effect from. The bonus of this is that it's got skincare ingredients in it and it's like a clean formula. So there's not a whole lot in it that's likely going to react with your skin if you're very sensitive. The next product I want to talk about is the Shade Slick Tinted Lip Oil in Eau Naturelle. The Canadian price for this is $31. The US price is $24. It's 7 milliliters, which is relative to other products. So the Dior Lip Oil is 6 milliliters. Actually, you're getting more in this one. The Dior Lip Oil is 6 milliliters. The Kosas Lip Oil is 4.6 milliliters. And the Ilia Lip Oil is 4.3 milliliters. So their description of this product is a slick of sheer color infused with rosehip oil and shea butter for healthy lips all day. So they say somewhere between an oil and a light stain, this lip tint was made for whenever and wherever. Repeated use to help maintain natural moisture levels in the lips over time. Rosehip oil and omega-3, 6, and 9 essential fatty acids encourage 
healthy barrier function and provide antioxidant benefits. There's shea butter and grapeseed oils condition and soft the lips and jojoba oil creates a protective barrier to help lock in moisturizer. So this is definitely top two products. Like I don't know if this is number one. I have two products that are kind of like the top and this is one of them. Like this is definitely one of the best products I think that I've tried and definitely one of the products that I would recommend to other people. Like it feels so nourishing. From a texture perspective, it feels very similar to the NYX This Is Everything lip oil. I have not tried a lot of lip oils, so I don't really know about other lip oils. I think I have an e.l.f. lip oil that I haven't really used. So again, don't have great comparable experience, but I'm loving the ingredient list in this. I love the way this feels. I love the way this goes on. So I do have this on, but I do have it over a more pink lip liner. I have it over the Milani 03 nude lip liner. That's my only sad little complaint about this is the shade is like, maybe a hair more orange than I like now that I see the shade in person. And like, I was looking at their shades online and like, <laughs> I kind of want all of them, but I kind of don't want all of them because none of them are quite in my mind what I'd actually love to see in this. I'd love to see a shade that's like a pinky neutral brown. So when I was looking at their shades, they have a shade taupe and they have a shade peat ba pink beet. And if those two like made baby, <laughs> Um, that would be like my perfect shade. So I feel like if they added a shade that's like a pinky brown, I would totally love that. Um, but I definitely like this product. Again, I think it's well-priced for the quality of the product. Um, and it's definitely something that I would be interested in getting more shades of in the future. Again, I have way too many lip products, so I, I will not be buying more shades anytime soon. They do have a clear one as well, um, which would be actually a really nice everyday wear as well. And I can see like wearing this, you know, just even as like, while you're getting ready to put makeup on because it's so nourishing and things like that. Um, like it's so good for your lips with all those ingredients. So yeah, this is definitely a top, top notch product. Uh, good job, Merit, on this one. I like it. Another top product from the brand. This is the brush number one blending brush. It's $39 Canadian or $30 US. The description of this is the number one tool in your kit used to blend your complexion products and you won't be able to tell where your skin and your makeup meet. Um, soft, uh, softly blends complexion products uh, made to complement the minimalist. So you're supposed to use it with this, um, but you can use it with any product. So I have used this with my Tarte foundation, the Tarte Clay Stick foundation, as well as today I have the L'Oreal Pro Glow on and I used it with that as well. Um, it's fairly densely packed. So they say that densely packed bristles make blending easy. Extra soft vegan bristles, which are gentle on reactive skin. So yeah, it is, it's densely packed, but it's not hard. Like it's very, very soft. My thoughts on this, this is a really, really nice brush. I don't have any brushes quite like this shape. And I think it's well-priced for the quality. Um, like I said, it worked well with a bunch of different products. I could even see buying, buying multiples of this and using one for like foundation, one for like cream bronzer, one for cr cream blush and no, maybe not one for highlight, but I can definitely see using it for like multiple different uh, like cream steps or even powder steps. It is a bit dense for some, like I don't know if I would use this for blush, um, but like face powder. So I have used this actually with my face powder as well. The Sephora compact that's in my project pan, I did use it with that as well. I definitely think like I know the brand is sort of like a minimalist brand and it's a very curated list of products and they're probably trying to be very intentional and specific with what they decide to launch next. I, I, I really think they got something here and they need to kind of keep branching this out um, with a couple other brushes. And you could still keep it in an edited set, maybe like two or three face brushes and two or three eye brushes and you'd be you'd be good to go with a brush set with this. And again, I think the price, like it is, it is pricey as a Canadian, like $39 US, 30 is not bad, but I feel like for the quality of this brush, that's actually a really good price. So the next product I want to talk about is the Merit Clean Lash Lengthening Mascara in Perfect Black. There is only one shade in this. It retails for $34 Canadian or US, um, it's $26. The product size is, is 7 grams. I read that on the package. When I was on Sephora, <laughs> mascaras don't really have like sizing on them, which is kind of interesting, but I'm assuming it's like a standard mascara size. Their primary description of this is, it's your go-to mascara for every day. It tints, lengthens, and lifts lashes with no smudging ever. So it's an everyday tubing mascara that defines, separates, and lengthens lashes for a wide-eyed look. Made to distribute the perfect amount of product on our precise brush. 
Curls and lifts, never clumps or flakes, easy to remove with warm water and cleanser to protect lashes from the pulling and harsh removers required by most smudge-proof mascaras. Proprietary tubing technology wraps and defines each. Last, fatty acids and olive oil esters condition lashes and vitamin B adds shine. Plant-derived rice bran wax helps to structure and lengthen lashes. So... I'm going to preface this as it's sort of a middle of the road for me because there's multiple factors here. So number one, I'm, I'm first to always say there's so many good drugstore mascaras. So like $34 for a mascara, like I'm, I'm rarely one to purchase something that's this expensive. Um, however, this is a tubing mascara and there's not a whole lot of tubing mascaras out there. I do want to mention that the Heimish mascara that I did try from Style Vanna is a tubing mascara and that one was like $10. This is definitely a lengthening mascara as opposed to volumizing. It says it right in the name. There were some people that were commenting that they didn't like this because it wasn't volumizing, but it, like don't expect volumizing. Um, it's really hard, I think, with a tubing mascara to like get that volume because it's trying to, the way it works is it sort of like tubes each mask, like lash. So you can't really build anything up, if that makes sense. I think I made a comment in a previous video that some mascaras look really weird when you're just putting the mascara on without any other makeup. This is like the exact opposite. This is the kind of mascara you can throw on and you have no other makeup on and it just gives you that little bit of zhuzh. You look a little bit more put together, a little more bright eyed without looking like you're actually really wearing much of anything. Um, I'm not really sure about the no smudging part. I don't really have an issue with that. Um, but given how this is very lightweight and thin, I feel like it's pretty unlikely that it's going to smudge. Now, I was reading through some of the comments on this on the Merit website, and some people did say this flaked on them. If it is going to flake on you, like I said, this is a really thin, lightweight formula. Like if I compare it to the Heimish one, which was definitely a much denser formula, this is very, very thin. It almost feels like smooth and silky going on. Like it's different than any other mascara that I've ever tried. Just wanted to show what the brush looks like. It's like a natural bristle brush. Um, it's a little big for my liking. I wouldn't mind if it was a bit smaller, uh, but I do like the tapered end. I always love a tapered end. It makes it easier to get into like the little corners. So yeah, like my thoughts on this product overall is it's a nice product. It's not my preference of a product. I do like, I like the L'Oreal what is it? Lash Paradise, Voluminous Lash Paradise. Like give me the big babam lashes. But I do see myself using this in like specific scenarios where I want a bit more of a natural type lash look. Especially in days where if you're not wearing a lot of makeup, it looks a lot better, I think. So the next product I wanna talk about is their Flush Balm Cheek Color. I have this in the shade Beverly Hills. I also actually have the shade Cheeky from the Sephora Sparkly Clean Set. It retails for $36 Canadian and $28 US. The product size is actually incredibly generous. It's nine grams. So compared to the Milk Makeup Stick, that's six grams. The Rare Beauty um, one that's sort of like in a pot is five grams. And then the Tower 28 one is 4.5 grams. So the description of this product is, it's a cream tint that melts into the skin from for a lip, with, lip from within <laughs> color that stays flush all day. It's a foolproof, flexible balm that deposits a creamy, transparent veil of color to let your skin show through. It's formulated with that esthetician I mentioned earlier, so it's like good for your skin. There's microfine pigment powders to just deposit a touch of color, um, light balmy finish, vitamin E conditions the skin. Product this, so this component, similar to this component, is made with 43% um, recycled plastic. The, the one thing I want to point today is I do have everything, um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the beginning, so I did get all of this sent to me from Merit, and I have everything that I got sent to me on my face today, except for I have actually the cheeky one, um, the cheeky blush on, so this is the one that I got in the Sephora kit. I'll actually do a swatch of these two together so you can see what they look like. The cheeky one is definitely more pigmented, the Beverly Hills one is, I feel like, a bit more natural looking. I mean, they're both pretty pigmented. So the top swatch is Cheeky and the bottom one is called Beverly Hills. These products are actually sold out on the website right now and I can understand why. Along with the lip oil and the lip brush, or lip brush, the face, face brush, this is like, those are this is number three, but like they're all top three. Like I feel like, actually this one might be number one. 
this like I feel like they they've got a home run with this product and I think they know it <laughs> um and their website actually shows it because it's pretty much sold out except for I think one color on their website right now um I don't know if you noticed when I did the five minute morning makeup I feel like this just blends so easily I've been getting into cream products I've been trying a lot of cream products this year I still struggle with the whole blending trying not to put too much product on getting worried that things are gonna look blotchy this went on so easy and so smoothly and so easy to blend out. Like I was amazed actually at how easy and it didn't blend away. Like the Rare Beauty one blends away <laughs> right away. Whereas this is like that happy balance of doesn't get like stuck to parts of your face where you feel like, oh God, I made a blotchy or like I've kind of put a big dot. Like, a, you know, you picture like taking a big dot of this and looking like Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy. No, it like blends so well. It doesn't last forever forever but I felt like it lasted a pretty decent while and it like fades nicely that it doesn't again look weird for me blushes just don't seem to last like even powder blushes don't last me all day so I feel like this is comparable to like a powder blush in terms of lasting which I think is pretty good for me um this is something where I think they could expand they definitely could expand to I think some different colors in this it's a pretty monochromatic, pretty neutral shade range. Like they definitely could have in there, I could see like a bright orange or perhaps a bright pink. I think there's a couple colors in there that they could definitely expand into. But yeah, this is a top-notch product. I think it's well-priced. Like $36 for nine grams is actually really well-priced. Like this is going to last you a while. <laughs> like this is a really large product. Um, and I mean, it's so cute. There's a little nubbin. Um, I think somebody mentioned somewhere that this product looks like they cut off like a milk makeup stick and that's that is kind of like what it looks like a very nicely designed product so the next product i want to talk about is the day glow highlighting balm and bounce so this is the more pinky shade the other shade they have i think is called cava and it's the more champagne shade champagne shade this is 39 dollars canadian and retails for 30 dollars us it's four grams, which is kind of small. The Fenty sticks, the match sticks are 7.1 grams. The Hourglass, you know, highlighting sticks are about 6.1 grams. And a Milk Mini, like hollow stick, they don't seem to have any of their mini highlighters. I couldn't see any of them on our Sephora, on Sephora Canada. They're about 7.1 grams. So their description of this is it's made for daytime. The highlighter that gives a dewy balm, sheen with zero sparkle, translucent moisturizing highlighter that illuminates skin, for that fresh morning dewdrop on a flower petal sheen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Formulated in partnership with the esthetician. It's vitamin rich base, replenishes moisture. Plant based squalene locks in hy uh, hydration, conditions skin, supports elasticity. Olive fruit oil nourishes skin with monosaturated fatty acids and vitamin E. Um, and then there's a phyto sterol and amino acid blend to help minimize moisture loss and promote healthy skin barrier function so <laughs> there's a whole lot in there but i don't really get caught the things like dewy and oils and stuff i don't really like this product i would say this is might be my least favorite it's definitely on the bottom um definitely in in the bottom realm let me just do a swatch here it feels really nice when you're swatching it um and it looks really nice so if you can see it, that's it right there. And I really like this color. It's definitely a glass skin lit from, lit from within. There's not a lot of base pigment in this. Um, so you're definitely gonna see skin through it. I just don't like the feel of this. So I say this a lot. I used to have really oily skin. So things like oils, I don't even like using facial oils. So. I don't think if you have oily skin, you're not going to like this. Um, if you don't like that feeling of oil on your face, like facial oils, you're not going to like this. Um, I like the shade. Again, I purposely picked a pink shade because I like pink with my skin tone and I think it looks good with my skin tone. It's very emollient though. And I feel like it does sort of like glide away. It's very similar in texture to the say glowy, dewy, balmy. <laughs> Thing. I don't know what they call it. It's got a really long name. That came actually in the same kit as the Cheeky blush. And so it's got that same sort of slip feeling to it. So I can imagine on a full face of makeup, like if you try to put this over foundation, it's going to wreck your foundation. Like I don't think it's going to work at all. I haven't even tried that because I just don't even want to go there. I did use this today. I do have it on, but I put it on actually before I put my makeup on just to 
as more of like a glowy, balmy um, primer a little bit, like on my cheekbones. I am getting a little zit right here, and I'm wondering if this, this might have been part of it. It might not be. It might just be a mask, mask and ease it, but I'm a little concerned that it might be this. Now, one thing I do want to mention too is a lot of people said that this product expired within a few months or went rancid really quickly. I can see that happening. It definitely, like none of the products have a scent. Nothing really smells, but this one does smell like, like raw oils. Like, you know, when you have a facial oil, this smells like a facial oil, like a raw facial oil. And I can see this going stinky real bad. Um, the other thing though is people did say that like there's not a lot of product, like it's just this little thing. It's not, like you can twist it up. There's probably about, if I twist it all the way up, it's probably as long as this top part. Um, so there is actually like, as much as like from a weight perspective, there's not a lot of product. It actually is a lot of product. Like the stick is pretty, let me just twist it all the way up here. It's a pretty decent, like that's it right there. I think that's a pretty decent amount for how you use this product. Although it is pretty emollient, so I feel like you would probably maybe go through it quickly if you used it quite a bit. I just, I don't get this product. <laughs> I don't get how I would incorporate this with my makeup because I feel like it would, like again, unsettle any sort of foundation. Again, I wore it pretty lightly over like powder and I did wear it lightly over, I had a bit of this on. It didn't seem to affect that too much, but again, it was, it was pretty sheer. So like I said, over full foundation probably wouldn't work. Yeah, I feel like this is a big miss. I feel like even the packaging of this, I don't like it. Like I don't, compared to like the other products, this one looks and feels cheaper than everything else. And like for the price of this, this is $39 Canadian. It's almost $40 Canadian. This, this is a pass for me. Some people might like it. Again, if you're into that natural dewy glass skin, you like facial oils, you have really dry skin. I could definitely see, I can definitely see people liking this. It's just not for me. And the last product that I'm going to talk about is the Brow 1980 Volumizing Pomade in Brown. This retails for $31 Canadian or $24 US. The product size is 2.4 grams. It was really confusing in trying to figure out comparisons. So one comparison I could get was the Kosas Airbrow is 3.7 grams and the Charlotte Tilbury Brow product is 1.15 grams. So it kind of lands in the middle in terms of size. It is a bit confusing. So it looks like this is how you pull it out, but it's actually this way. <laughs> so the longer end is like where you hold it and the shorter end is like the dip part. So it's more like a, an ink eyeliner type packaging. Um, while I've got it out, this is the brush. Brush is a little larger than I would like, um, but it is tapered. So let's just go into the description of this. So it says a nod to the brows of the 80s. This pomade adds color and volume for healthy fluffy arches. This tinted flexible pomade shapes and grooms your brows in place for natural bold arches made with mineral based formula to provide flexible all day hold, never smudges or flakes. Nourishing vitamin B adds flexibility and encourages fuller looking brows. Kaolin clay and mineral pigments build natural color, uh, targeted precision brush to make it easy to coat every hair. So, and this is also on the bottom for me. <laughs> so these two are like the bottom, the bottom products for my, from my perspective. Okay. I know I have high hopes for all these sort of brow pomade type products and I have crap barely their brows to begin with so I don't know what I'm expecting <laughs> um, but I keep expecting a miracle someday but I do find different brow products work differently so I can compare this at least to other sort of brow things so they do call this a pomade I feel like that's a little misleading if you have used something like the Anastasia dip brow pomade or the dip brow gel pomade I have both that's definitely much more pigmented, much more of a pomade, much more like holds. There's really no hold to this. This is like pigment, but it's soft. So if you like a soft brow and you don't like any of that crunchy, I like the crunchy because I need my brow hairs to like go up and stay. Actually, I was watching a video from Callie Gooch the other day. No, Kathleen Lights. And she was, I think, I can't remember which one, one of them. And they were talking about the Patrick Ta laminate brow thing. And I'm like, oh, that sounds, that sounds like what I want. <laughs> so I think I need to try that. Um, this is not that. So if you like something softer, definitely this is better. I feel like the shade, the shade's fine in terms of it's not too red. It's a nice ashy shade. So you're not going to get that red tone, but it is a light brown. Like I feel like it, it's not as deep as like I have, I think a medium brown in the Anastasia one. And that's definitely darker than this. Um, it is probably comparable to the Essence Brownie Brows, like the brown is probably similar 
in shade. Actually, I think the Essence Brownie Brows is lighter than the brown in this. Um, but speaking of shades, there is only three shades. There's like a blonde, a brown, and a black. And I feel like that's pretty limited. Like if you're a deep brown, like I actually have darker brown hair. This, this isn't really going to work. And I think the black might be too black. And like there's nothing for redheads. Like redheads always get the short end of the stick. There's never anything for them. I also feel like it's very little amount of product. And it's a very thin amount of product. I actually tried to swatch this. <laughs> and I couldn't swatch it. It just, like, it's so thin, and I just kind of was mushing it around, and like, this isn't working. <laughs> I can't swatch it. Um, so it's a very thin product, which is good in some ways. Like, you're never gonna be able to overdo it with this. Um, side note, I did like that it was called Brow 1980, because I was born in 1980, so kind of, I thought it'd be special, but unfortunately, and the packaging of this, I mean, the packaging, like, that's beautiful. Like, you, you have to admit that, like, this looks so much better than this, right? Um, really, really nice packaging, but yeah, it's just not for me. And I, I don't see a whole lot of people liking this. Like I can see somebody like Emily Noel liking this. Somebody that doesn't need a lot of color, doesn't need a lot, but just needs a little zhuzh to the brows to just comb them and like try to even the color out a little bit. I can see Emily, like Emily Noel liking this, but <laughs> for somebody like me, it's just not enough. Um, that's why like with the night the evening look I definitely had to pull in like a brow pencil because I, ne I needed something Okay, so now that I've kind of gone through each product I kind of just want to give my overall thoughts on the brand and just like a summary overall So I did want to mention this is this is the box that it came in the packaging It's kind of looking a little more blue on the screen, but it's a really like blue gray packaging So this is one of the boxes. It's beautiful packaging like I love this outer packaging if I were to design outer packaging Something like this, definitely for sure. And like the box is super cute, says less is more. And then it says inside, this box is made from post-consumer waste and is 100% recyclable. So yeah, all these boxes are just class, uh, cardboard so I can recycle all of these, which is awesome. Overall, I definitely think this brand is well marketed and well designed. It is marketed for like the minimalist makeup. And for somebody like, again, I think it would be well suited for somebody that does not like to wear a whole lot of makeup, but just wants to look a little bit more put together, especially if you don't have a whole lot of time. I also think it's well designed for people that are not like comfortable with makeup, like don't wear a lot of makeup. So I think of like, in my personal life, I actually don't have a lot of people. I have like maybe three friends that are like into makeup, like in real life, like me, <laughs> um, nice close friends. And then outside of that, like most of my friends are not really big into makeup. And I have a couple close friends that definitely have like sensitive skin. So like they're definitely, they use like a lot of products like Avene and stuff that are for sensitive skin. And this is a brand of makeup that I would be super comfortable recommending to them because I don't think, I don't think this makeup would be confusing for them. I don't think this makeup would be problematic for them, like make them break out or cause them any like issues. Like again, everything's pretty unscented and it also looks really good. So like I feel, I would feel comfortable like gifting this to somebody like again, if there's any men, if there any husbands or boyfriends, should I, should I yell louder and get them to come from the other room? This is very giftable makeup. Like, I definitely think any woman, man, maybe not child, older child, teenager, would enjoy this makeup. Like, I definitely feel like, maybe not teenagers, it depends. It depends on the teenager. Like, I think of somebody like Jamie Page. Like, she's, she's obviously not a teenager, but she's young, but she's always been into things like Lancome and stuff. I can see Jamie Page loving this brand. Um... I actually, so the funny thing about this, so I was gifted all of this, um, obviously except for this, because I got this, I bought this in the Sephora kit. So again, big thank you to, to Merit for reaching out to me and sending me these products so that I could try them out and let you guys know. So funny, I saw this brand, I guess it would have been last year or early this year, pop up on Sephora Canada. And I was like, I haven't heard anybody talk about this brand. Maybe I can buy a bunch of their products. I think there was only like three or four on Sephora Canada. I was like, maybe I can buy the products and do a review on it before anybody else, like immediately first. Um, and I swear, like a week later, I saw a couple of videos pop up saying like Merit Beauty. And I was like, oh, I missed the boat. I always miss the boat. It's a hard thing about being Canadian and obviously not like, I don't get PR or anything. So, um, well, I did now, but yeah, it's like, I'm always behind the gun anyway. So I saw a few people like thumbnails come up and it's like, oh, maybe I won't do it. And I actually didn't watch anybody else's video because in the back of my mind, I still kind of thought maybe I would um, investigate the brand eventually. And then that was one of the reasons actually, I think I mentioned that in the Sparkly Queen set, that this was one of the products that really intrigued me and I wanted to use. Um, so it was super exciting to get these products to be able to try them. So it's kind of like, I just wanted to share that. It was like kind of like a full circle 
yay, <laughs> being able to finally like try these products because I've been thinking about them for so long. So again, I, I like to always mention pricing. So had I bought, so there's seven products in the line. So I, that's all the products in their line. They only have seven products in their line. Like I said, it's an edited, curated, minimalist type makeup. So um, again, really nicely packaged. If you bought all seven, there is a collection you can buy, which would cost $220 Canadian. Buying each individual item would cost you about 259 Canadian. So that's a savings of 15%, which actually I think is a really good bundle. I get super annoyed when brands bundle things and it's like either no savings for bundling um, or like, you know, like $2 or something. Like I feel like 15%, that's actually a really good, good bundle for the price. The other thing I do want to mention is Sephora does have a little trio kit. And I think if, if you're interested in this brand, but you're not, you're not really willing to spend it, spend too much money. I think that's a great little kit to try. There's, I think the lip oil, the cheek product, the cheek balm, which I think that are two of my favorite products. And then you get a mini of the mascara. So again, if you're a bit hesitant about trying a tubing mascara or you're not sure this mascara will work for you, I think getting a mini and like whoever really finishes a mascara, let's be real, right? So I, I feel like that's a great little set to, to try out these products. For someone like me, would I do that five minute makeup regularly? No, <laughs> I do wear full face of makeup, mostly partially because I am, not mostly partially, wow, that was like contradictory, mostly because I am doing project panning. So I am using like a full face of product to pan through things. But there are days where I just wanna throw something quickly on because I'm just running to the store. Or I just wanna look a little bit more put together. Like I think about when I go home to my family, like my family has, it's a beach town, it's a beach area. So I don't like wearing a lot of makeup, but I do like wearing something. And I feel like this stuff is, this makeup, this brand, this line is very suitable to that. The other thing is too, I did, I did some digging. <laughs> did some digging into the owner um, and how she kind of got started on this. So she's got a long history. She was like an editor at Elle. She started up a bunch of companies over the past few years. I'm guessing I'm close in age with her, um, but they did start a brand. What is it called? She's just started a brand or a company called Powered Brands, which sounds like one of those like umbrella companies. And it says they're planning to invest funds into beauty, wellness, and personal care brands. So I'm, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see, see where they go with this line and if there's going to be other sister or similar lines to this brand. Speaking of which, she is also the owner. So the owner's name is Catherine um, Power. She's also the CEO and founder of Burst, which is a skincare line. And that's actually available in Shoppers Drug Mart. I've never tried it, but I've heard people say good things about it. I think, again, it's like a clean low ingredients type brand. Um, something I've always been interested in trying, but I just haven't tried them. Cause I know they are in Shopper's Drug Mart, but they're kind of hard to find at times. Like they're sort of like in a corner. Um, like I don't know if they, I don't know how many products they have, but I've heard good things about that brand as well. So I hope this was informative to you. I know this is probably gonna be a really long video. I apologize if it's a bit choppy. I've had to like stop and start so many times because of background noises, <laughs> which drives me crazy. Um, but I really want to get this video, speaking of which, want to get this video done. So I'm going to wrap this up now. Apologies if you can hear that. If you liked this video, feel free to give it a little thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you did subscribe to my channel here in Toronto, Canada. I hope you're doing well and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.